If God had destroyed Lucifer immediately, that would have showed that while he was interested in justice, that he did not have any foresight. It would have been shown that God's way of dealing with sin was not an effective way to prevent its regrowth. It would have reduced how angels related to him in terms of trust. Eventually, the angels marshaled into companies, some siding with Lucifer and some refusing to relinquish the thought of the goodness and fairness and justice of God. And they sided with the Son of God, the one who is what God is, Michael. Opposing Lucifer and leading the armies of God was the archangel Michael. Throughout the scriptures, he plays major and decisive roles. So the question is asked, who is Michael? Who is the archangel? That's a question that has caused an awful lot of uh, argument and discussion over the years. But I think the Bible is pretty clear on that subject. Throughout the centuries, the word angel has come to describe a winged heavenly being with a harp or a halo. But unlike the words cherub or seraphim, that describes a race or type of heavenly beings. The word angel simply means messenger, and an archangel is a chief messenger. In other words, it's a role or a job description. What are angels? Angels are intelligent beings that God has created, but when those beings come to this earth, and when they interact with humans in the Bible story, God had to call them something, and he chose to call them messengers. He called the angels messengers both in the Old Testament in Hebrew, and he called them messengers in the New Testament in Greek. And that has caused a little bit of confusion, because sometimes that word messenger is used for beings that aren't angels at all. And I just want you to know that, that not every time you see the word angel in the Bible does it mean one of those angels. Sometimes it just means a messenger. Michael the Archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. And so the, the, the word uh, archangel simply means that he is over, he arches over, he is the chief, he is over all the angels. And so he's not one of them, he's over them. So he is also known as the angel of the Lord. Now throughout the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord, when he appeared to people, demanded respect and worship. And some of the patriarchs and prophets claimed that when they came into contact with the angel of the Lord, that they had actually seen God and they were afraid that they would die as a consequence. So who is Michael? He is the one who is what God is. So before he came to this earth and became man, the Godhead was represented by Michael. Michael means who is like God. He's not an angel. He is simply the head of the angels. Have you ever wondered what was the name of Jesus in the Old Testament? You know, when he's born there in Matthew and his name is called Jesus, well, that's not when he came into existence. Jesus existed for forever before that time. But in the Old Testament, what's he called? I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to show you the evidence. The Old Testament name for Jesus is Michael. It doesn't mean that Jesus is one of those created beings, the angels. It doesn't mean that at all. Uh, Michael is the chief of the angels. He's the one that gives orders to the angels. He's the one that tells Gabriel what to do. And you can understand why, why Michael is called an archangel when you know that that word ark means leader. But I will shew thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. 
and there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael your prince. The Bible says in the book of Daniel that Michael is the prince that stands for our people. That is the prince of the Jews, one who protects God's people. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. In, in Daniel chapter 10, verse 21, but I will shew thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael your prince. Referring to the prince of Israel. In chapter 12, again we read in verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. So here we have Michael referred to as the great prince, the great prince of Israel. He's the one who is delivering God's people. In John 5 verse 25, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. That's very important because the dead are going to hear the voice of the Son of God, uh, and He's the one who's going to give them life. In John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29, Christ is referred to as the, the voice, the Son of God who raises the dead. And shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And so, again, when we put that together with 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So it seems like when we put these verses together, it becomes very clear that Jesus is Michael. Michael is the archangel. Michael is like God. Michael is God. And so the, the, the word uh, archangel simply means that he is over. He arches over. He is the chief. He is over all the angels. And so he's not one of them, he's over them. He is God himself in the form of his son, Jesus Christ. Now, Michael was also the creator of all the angelic hosts, including Lucifer. The son was God, just as the father was God, from everlasting to everlasting. Being so close with the father, the son, they, they were one with purpose. In Revelation 12, verse 7, Michael is described as having fought the dragon, overpowered the dragon, cast him out of heaven, and cast him down to this earth. Michael, the one who is what God is, was taken into the council of God. And the angelic host were excluded from this council. And this incited jealousy in Lucifer. And this jealousy started fermenting in his mind and he started communicating this jealousy to the angelic host. Why should he, the exalted covering cherub, not also be taken into the counsel of God? Why should he be treated like a created being subject to the rules and the laws which governed heaven. Wasn't he too exalted for that? Lucifer lost sight of who he was. He was so enthralled by his own wisdom and beauty and the adoration he received from the rest of the heavenly host that he forgot about his creator. He forgot he owed him his very life.
gospel, that good news, that was preached to Adam and Eve right there in the Garden of Eden at the lowest time of their life. The plans that God had had for them of longevity and health and, and all this wonder that God had created for them, that had been lost. And yet God had a plan to, to restore that. And they heard that there in the Garden of Eden. This plan had been part of the discussion in the Council of God. Before this world was even made, God and Michael made a plan that would counter Lucifer's power and also vindicate God's character. He would save humanity at any cost and yet remain the benevolent God he had always been. He would put an end to this war once and for all, but the cost would be high, very high.